In this video, we'll quickly review the differences between oligodendrocyte and Schwann cells. So here we begin. Oligodendrocytes are glial cell types present in the central nervous system, whereas Schwann cells are glial cell types present in the peripheral nervous system. Oligodendrocyte can myelinate multiple axons, so one oligodendrocyte to many axons. Whereas Schwann cells can only myelinate a single axon, so there is a one-to-one -one mapping between Schwann cell and the axonal myelination. Then oligodendrocyte progenitors are actually neuronal progenitors, whereas Schwann cells are derived from the neural crest cells. So these are the top three differences between Schwann cells and oligodendrocyte. Now let us elaborate on these differences. So first we'll be talking about the oligodendrocytes, which are key glial cell type in the central nervous system regulating the myelination process. So it's important to remember and note that oligodendrocyte can myelinate multiple axons and Schwann cells are present in the peripheral nervous system and one Schwann cell myelinates one axon. Schwann cells were actually described by Theodore Schwann in early 19th century and oligodendrocytes are particularly glial cell type which are derived from the neuronal stem cells. So neuronal stem cells in general can give rise to neurons, oligodendrocytes and also astrocytes. So there are temporal regulation which helps to produce oligodendrocytes. It's important to note that neurogenesis happens quickly. Oligodendrocyte genesis or oligodendrogenesis takes place at the later half of the embryonic gestation. So if this is a gestation timeline in human, then there are different time points where oligodendrocyte development is happening at GW 10 to 18 oligodendrocyte progenitor cells are developed then around GW or gestation week 18 to 28 the immature oligodendrocytes form and the mature oligodendrocytes form from somewhere around 28 to 40 GW. So each of these cell types are differentiated by specific markers. So all of them are oligodendrocyte, but different stages of their maturation. Now let's talk about the Schwann cells. In contrast to oligodendrocyte, Schwann cells are not produced from the neuronal uh, progenitor cell. They are produced from the neural crest cells. So from the neural crest cells, first the uh, Schwann cell progenitor or precursor is formed, which starts attaching and docking to the axons. Eventually, it start interacting with the axon more elaborately. So axonal interaction increases. Still, it's an immature Schwann cell. Eventually, Schwann cell wraps around the axon several times. And there is also interaction with the basal lamina. At this point of stage, it has matured. So now we understand the development of Schwann cell as well. Now let's talk about the broad functional similarity between Schwann cell and oligodendrocytes. So far we have been only talking about the differences. Though they are different in terms of origin and location where they are found, they have one basic function which is common that is the myelination process. So why myelination is important? Because be it a central nervous system neuron or peripheral nervous system neuron, the nerve conduction requires insulation. So insulation ensures there is no electrical signal leakage during transmission. Also speed, salutary conduction and efficiency is mediated by this myelination which is done by oligodendrocytes in the CNS and Schwann cell in the PNS. So due to the Schwann cell, the nerve conduction can happen in the salutary fashion. So it not only improvise the speed of nerve impulse conduction but it ensures action potential can jump from one node of ranvier to another so this particular jumping kind of motion of action potential is basically known as uh, saltatory conduction this ensures the conduction happens very fast and sometimes it is really relevant that the conduction happens quickly now, other than these kind of functions, Schwann cells are involved in nerve regeneration, nutrient transport, and phagocytosis. When there is a peripheral nerve injury, Schwann cells take charge to heal that particular uh, injury. Also, Schwann cells have specific transporters which allow the uh, allow the uptake of specific uh, uh, nutrients from the blood and can provide it to the neuron. Also, it can take role, active role in phagocytosis and clear cellular debris which might have resulted from the neuronal injury.
Now let's talk about how Schwann cells can help in neuronal regeneration process. Here is a neuron which is injured. So obviously there would be injury induced neuronal degeneration or valerian degeneration. So obviously macrophages would migrate to this particular region to clear up the debris. Eventually the portion which was uh, which was intact it would secrete it, it would lead to the production of axon sprouts and all these uh, oligodendron all these schwann cells would eventually align themselves to form the bands of bunger so basically so bang, band of bunger is basically oligodendrocytes which are dedifferentiated and they form a passage passageway through which these axonal sprouts can be guided and this is this accelerates the process of nerve regeneration in the peripheral nervous system now let's put swan cells and oligodendrocyte in the context of disease so gullian barre syndrome is one type of acute rapidly progressive demyelinating disorder which is also autoimmune in nature in this case gm1 gangliocyte present in the swan cells are targeted by the immune system so it's a autoimmune disorder which ultimately leads to destruction of these or damage into these uh, swan cells and the insulation of the neuron obviously this would re result in weakness numbness tingling and all symptoms starts from the bottom i mean lower from the distal to proximal area eventually this is reflected in the electromyography readings there would be a decrease in nerve conduction velocity charcot's marie tooth disease or cmt is another kind of disease which which involves the schwann cells so obviously due to a mutation in the pmp22 gene which is a which produce some protein which is a component of myelin leads to this particular disease So this particular disease involves muscle pain cold hand curled toes curled fingers muscular atrophy etc all due to the problem in the schwann cell and the myelination now in the central so this this is happening mostly in the peripheral nervous system so far now we are shifting our view to the central nervous system where oligodendrocyte def uh, defects can be important so here we talk about multiple sclerosis multiple sclerosis is a particular uh, condition where the myelin sheath surrounding the axon gets damaged and this is happening in the central nervous system which leads to plethora of neurological symptoms so oligodendrocyte has specific proteins known as myelin basic protein or proteolipid protein plp myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein or mog all of these proteins are not supposed to be treated as foreign by the body's immune system because they are present in the oligodendrocyte in normal situation but in case of multiple sclerosis for unknown reason immune system start treating these proteins as foreign so obviously there are reactive cells generated against this particular protein so auto reactive t cells further activate b cells and b cell differentiated into antibody secreting plasma cells so obviously these antibody secreting plasma cells target specific proteins present on these myelin sheath and thereby destroying these myelin sheath in a complement dependent manner and that leads to demyelination in the central nervous system so be it oligodendrocyte be it schwann cell we are appreciate what were the differences the key differences were oligodendrocyte were found in cns in contrast schwann cells are found in pns oligodendrocyte myelinates multiple axons whereas schwann cell myelinate only one oligodendrocyte progenit oligodendrocyte was derived from neuronal progenitor whereas schwann cell was derived from neural crest so we have a nice summary and now if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe if you like our videos please pay via paytm paypal or upi support us via super thanks or you can also support us via patreon see you in next video